Hey guys! Welcome! I, so many of you guys have requested that I do this video early. <clears throat> I decided to be nice. So, let's talk about Howard W. Hunter Chapter 9, which is the one that's about tithing. Now, if you have any questions about this or comments, go ahead and put them in the comments now and I will answer them as we go along, okay? Now, I know I didn't share as many ideas for this one as I normally do, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Sometimes it's good to just kind of stick to the basics and focus on that too. So don't be afraid of that either, okay? I do have about five points to share with you today, though, so hopefully that will help you teach this as you prepare some more. <clears throat> My first tip, though, you guys, is please keep the definition of tithing simple, okay? <clears throat> that means when you're defining tithing, define it like it says in the manual, okay? It's 10% of the increase, right? Do not get into what the definition of an increase is. Do not get into an argument about that. Keep the definition simple, okay? You don't want to drive away the spirit first thing, okay? Um, also, be really careful about how, and this goes with all the lessons, okay? How you make it sound. Are you making it sound so easy that it's ridiculous if you don't do it? Or are you just sharing your testimony and encouragement of paying the law, obeying the law of tithing? Because everybody has different struggles, and this might not be one of your struggles, but it is somebody's. And so just be aware of that and not make it sound so easy that they're stupid for not doing it, okay? So remember, what's the purpose of your lesson? To strengthen their testimony and to encourage, okay? All right, tip number two. <laughs> so as you probably know, I'm a huge fan of pre-lesson openers, okay? So that means before you even get up to teach, you're already teaching. <clears throat> ah, my connection is fading in and out. Just stay with me. Don't worry about the pixelated face, okay? So, for this opener, let's start with a whiteboard. Up on the board, put two questions. So, one of the questions can be, why should we pay tithing, right? And then the other one is, why do you pay tithing? Those type of questions kind of open it up to more people. Why should you pay tithing? And why do you pay tithing? But they also give you a little bit more of different answers. So, I'm a huge fan of the post-its. So just hand everybody a post-it as they walk in, have a bowl of pens and pencils up on the table so people can grab one if they need it, and just have them answer the questions and stick it up on the board. This way, if somebody doesn't want to answer, it's not like everybody knows they didn't answer, but it also gets a lot more people participating and they're already thinking about the lesson before you start, which is awesome, and they're more likely to comment, right? That's the way we go, okay? So, why should you pay hiding? <clears throat> Um, and why do you pay tithing? And you can just talk about some of those answers at the beginning once you do get up, okay? All right, here's the third one. Grab a jar. You don't want to make it too big. You're going to want this jar to overflow by the end, okay? <clears throat> and just before you even teach, so here's another pre-lesson starter. Um, talk to people in your ward. Talk to people that are on Facebook. If you have a Facebook group, email people, call people, talk to people every Sunday before your lesson, and just start gathering stories about blessings of tithing. It's about when they pay tithing and how they've been blessed. You know, um, in the study guide, lots of those um, articles that I shared with you have stories in them. Get those stories, okay? And so then when we get to the part of talking about blessings, you're going to use this jar, and you're going to fill it up as you talk about blessings, and you're going to ask your class. You know what blessings they've seen and as you and you don't you want a couple stories right because you obviously stories help us learn in different ways than just straight up answers do but we don't want to spend our entire time on this either so make sure you're kind of getting a combination of both things okay and then just as you get them just add marbles or beads or big beans or just something to your jar okay and these are going to be the blessings that are kind of pretty um the primary answers for tithing, right? Like um, financial help or more obvious blessings, okay? And then if you've read Elder Bednar's talk, like I've suggested in the study guard, this is where this one's going to come in, okay? We're still obviously focusing on um, Howard W. Hunter's words, okay? But this is a point that you can bring in. Is Elder Bednar talks about the significant but subtle blessings. So bring that in at this point, right? You already got some marbles in this jar. And, say, and give an example of some of the significant but subtle blessings. For example, some of the ones that he gave was um, gratitude for what you have instead of envy of what you don't have. 
it could also be like the story he shared with Dr. B the doctor bills weren't as much as they probably should have been, right? Um, another blessing is prioritizing. Another blessing is having the strength and the energy to do the things that you need to do. The other blessing is to do more with less. Okay, those are all like really subtle blessings that we don't always recognize. So just make sure. And so talk about those and really point a lot of those out because I think a lot of the times we miss those ones. Hold on, I know this is loud. Hold on. We miss those subtle ones. And if we talk about them, I think people will start realizing all the blessings that we have. I remember he gave this talk a couple of years ago. And as he was giving this talk, I was realizing about all these blessings that I haven't shown any gratitude for about tithing that I've received. And that's what we want to do is we want to open up our eyes to all the blessings that we get. Because as it says in that book, um, there's not going to be enough room to receive it. That's the, like we get so many blessings from tithing, tithing. See, now we're going to overflow. There's just not enough room to receive it. And that's the point that we want to make. There's so many in, in, we probably, you guys still with me? My internet, I guess, is acting up. I'm sorry. Okay. So the point is, um, there's not a room enough to receive all those blessings, right? And so all that jar is overflowing. Okay. Now, what you can do next is tie in um, the handout on the blog, okay? Now, these are envelopes. It'll look like this when you're done. And then there's also these cards that you can pass out. And you can just use one or the other. That's fine, too. Um, you probably don't want to make all of these. And I don't even recommend that you do. I recommend just printing out the thing and passing them out and having people make it themselves, okay? You don't need to make them all, okay? But do get, take a few minutes, pass these parts out, and have people, after you've listed all those blessings, and especially the little significant ones but that are subtle, have everybody just take a few minutes and, and think and ponder and write a couple of these things down, okay? And, and give them like, you know, put some music on or something and just give them time to write and to just think. Sometimes that's the best thing is just to have quiet, pondering time during a lesson. Now, after that, you can do this part where um, at the end of the manual, you'll remember he told us, President Hunter told a story. Um, I'm going to get to that in just a second. So you're going to hold up this jar of blessings that we've already talked about, and then you're going to hold up some money, and you're going to say, which would you rather do without, right? Because we really can't afford to be without these, right? We can't afford to get out of this. It's going to take a lot of finagling sometimes, but this is so much more valuable, right? You can even do that commercial, priceless, right? Um, but we can't afford not to pay our tithing. And that's so obvious when we think about all those amazing blessings. And you can tie in that story at the end of the manual that President Hunter shares, okay? So those are my ideas. Hopefully the internet works long enough for you guys to get most of them. Let me know if um, it skips some of it and I will redo it, okay? You guys, if you have any more questions, please ask me. And those of you that are doing um, a Mother's Day lesson, um, please, please remember that um, Mother's Day isn't about having kids. It's about who you are, your divine nature. Okay? All right, you guys, have a great day.